Am I enough? Am I enough for other people? Can I be enough for myself? I struggle a lot with feeling like I can be enough. Madeline wants to run a half marathon. You're the YouTuber's little sister. I never even got to make a first impression. I'm my own person, but it's like nobody sees that. That is the dynamic we've had our whole lives, and that's something I wanted to change. Hey guys, before we dive into this week's episode, I wanna say a quick thank you to Playtex for sponsoring this week's video. Because being on your period should not prevent you from doing what you wanna do or achieving your health and fitness goals. Playtex sport tampons have a 360 degree design and flex fit technology that moves the way you move. They are designed to fit your body and it's every move for a protective leak barrier while swimming, running, or being active in other ways. And for my sister, that means being prepared for her very first half marathon. We're really excited to help you guys play on and save some cash on your next box of Playtex sport by visiting the link in my description. And thanks again to Playtex for sponsoring this video. And now let's do an extreme body makeover. Hi, I'm Madeline. I'm Michelle's little sister. Fitness is like a whirlwind for me. I'll get super into it for a period of time and then something will happen and it's just nothing. And right now I'm in one of those nothing periods. Since Michelle is really disciplined with her health and fitness, I think it'll be really cool to have my butt kicked by her for a little bit. Madeline already has a very fit body type. However, Madeline wants to run a half marathon. So in this episode, I hope to not only help Madeline, but also educate you guys on the proper training, diet, nutrition, and overall lifestyle in order to run a half marathon at your prime. Michelle and I weren't always close. When I was four, she was eight. And the development that happens between the ages of four and eight is really large. So we just didn't necessarily get along. I am a very type A person. That's no secret. When I would try to help Madeline with school or anything else, I did it the wrong way. I was pushy. I was not good at stepping out and letting her grow on her own. Being Michelle's little sister is really interesting. In school, Michelle was valedictorian of every class that she had. Kindergarten, valedictorian. Eighth grade, valedictorian. My high school, valedictorian. And I was not bad at school, but because Michelle was 98s and above and I was like a B, everybody was just severely disappointed in me. I really got the lecture of like, you just have so much potential. All the time. I can't even begin to imagine what that's like. I feel a bit guilty about it. I don't like that people put pressure on her to do the same things that I do just because we're sisters. Once Michelle's YouTube channel started taking off, I would try to meet new people and everybody would just be like, you're the YouTuber's little sister. I never even got to make a first impression. I hope that this brings us closer together. This experience for me will of course be about helping my sister Madeline, but also a challenge for me to learn how to support her in the right way. I think a lot of people are probably going to watch this video and think I'm just trying to be Michelle, and that's just not the case. I see a lot of health issues running in my family. I wanted to make sure that I was giving myself the best chance to prevent heart disease or diabetes. My new fitness goals are to take my body and make it the next level. Madeline, I'm really excited for you to be on Extreme Body Makeover. I am really excited to introduce you to Brandon and Nick. Hi. Brandon's gonna be doing your nutrition. Nick's gonna be guiding your workouts in the gym. Cool, Good I'm times. excited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at the results from your body scan. You're at 23.7% which is a great range. It's a high end of fit. And then your weight is at 125 from a nutritional standpoint. I noticed that you have a couple of restrictions. Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> My allergies. There's carrots, corn, soy, lamb, green beans, potatoes, basically every grass, every pollen, tree, whatever, I'm allergic to it. Cats, most animals, but not dogs. Every nut ever. Peas, celery, cotton, grapes. Grapes were my favorite fruit growing up. Oh, buckwheat. People are like, oh, are you like gluten intolerant? You have so many allergies. And I'm like, no, I can eat gluten. But you know what I can't eat? Gluten-free substitute buckwheat. When Madeline sent me the allergy list, I was like, oh my gosh, she can't eat like anything. My first allergic reaction was when I was eight and it was to ragweed. I had a huge skin reaction. My entire face swelled up. Literally do not remember any of this. <laughs> really? 
I don't. Okay. The... I just remember the time that you got attacked by ants. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Now it gets to the point where if I have even the tiniest shred of a carrot in a salad, it'll make my entire throat itch. Like I have an inhaler for it. It's pretty severe. Basically every diet that I'm aware of, you restrict certain foods or portions or whatever. I already live with a three page list of restrictions every day. So to add even more restrictions on top of that, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. It'll be different. Have you ever get... had a client with this many allergies? My wife, actually. Really? Oh. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. It totally changes your lifestyle. Definitely. And you feel like you go out to eat and you don't know what to order. I'm gonna be extremely considerate with all this stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Because I know how it is. Yeah. Strength training is going to directly impact her marathon training. She's gonna be able to push through that pain and burning sensation a little bit better. On the flip side, the marathon training is gonna help her weight training. She's gonna be able to push through those limitations that she might otherwise have. Michelle definitely has a deep exercise knowledge. She has has endurance, she has strength, and she's able to push herself when she's challenged. And I think that's one thing that Madeline's gonna be able to pick up on. It's just a lot of running, and I've never done anything like that before. I honestly need help. Even though I have resisted getting help from Michelle in a really long time, there's a world that I can live in where I can have a relationship with my sister while also being an independent person. Every workout, we're gonna do a cardio warm up to start. You're gonna find out pretty soon here, legs are gonna start to get a little bit tired. First workout, sister workout. <laughs> oh, happy National Siblings Day. <laughs> Nick has no idea what he signed up for with this one. Troublemaker. We're gonna go into our dynamic stretches now. This should kind of take us over the edge to where we are sweating a little bit more. We're gonna go back and forth, hold each of these stretches two to three seconds. When we weight train, we always wanna do this kind of a stretch. It gives us an opportunity to warm up those muscles, increase flexibility a little bit, but also assess how your body's feeling. The first workout was a lot of learning. I had never really lifted weights before. I had to learn how to do it properly, how to hold myself. Here we have a hamstring curl. A lot of times you have strength disparities between one leg to the other. This is how we get rid of that. Right in my hip flexor on my right hip. It's not super painful, but it just feels really wrong. I think that I run incorrectly. I really thought that with my background in yoga, I would be pretty even on both sides. And using the machine, I'm discovering I'm really, really, really not. Now we're gonna do a leg raise. So I want you to raise the legs up. Give me a pause in the top. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're gonna pause and then resist. Use that pause even if you're not able to get it. Give the effort and then resist on the way back down. 10 of them. One of the big factors of this challenge for both of us was on Madeline's end, working on letting go of comparison, and on my end, working on letting go of needing to help in every capacity possible. That is the dynamic we've had our whole lives, and that's something I wanted to change. On the last set of the leg raise, we're gonna do a little different. Go ahead, get yourself up in the start position. I want you to raise one knee up, and you're gonna keep it there. Stay here. Straight leg raise with that leg. You got 10. Got it, I made sure to cheer as much as possible because I genuinely am very excited for her, but also step out of the way. Last one, last one. Oh. Nice. <sighs> beep, beep. Most importantly, I just want to embrace what Madeline is. Everybody's different, so everybody is going to train differently, and I just want to do my best to bring out the best in her. You look like those twins in The Shining right now. <laughs> I really wanted to make sure that when Brandon provided her meal plan, that it wasn't just gonna be a list of boring foods, but rather, here are a list of foods that are exciting, that you can eat, and also, let's work on finding some really cool recipes to make it fun as well. A lot of times when people take on something like a half marathon or a marathon, they're ill-equipped with nutrition. There's so many calories that are being burned that they don't realize they need to fuel themselves properly to avoid losing muscle. So I wanted to make sure I offset that by providing her with more proteins, carbs, and fats. One of the key protein sources that we were using for her was just different kinds of fish. And then it's just peppering in healthy carbohydrates 
foods that she could eat that she wasn't affected by. Once we kind of dialed in what was good for her, it became a lot easier. I ended up really liking the meal plan. I think my favorite benefit that I wasn't entirely expecting was just learning how to cook fish and cook it well. I made some of my new favorite recipes doing this challenge. Cooking at home definitely saved some money. But alternatively, when I did eat out, if I wanted to stay on diet, it was two to three times more expensive. I'm on a special diet. Is there a way that I could get a fillet like that, but raw? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm yeah, so sorry. Yes, look at this. <laughs> there was that time my dogs ate my meal plan and I had to eat out. Titus, did you get in all of my fish? Are you a bad dog? Are you so bad? So if you leave fish to defrost, just leave it somewhere where your dog can't get it. Or maybe in like a closed container, because mine was just in some tin foil with like a paper towel around it. I really enjoyed having Nick as my trainer. It helped a lot, cross-training with weights. It definitely made me stronger. For the most part for Madeline's challenge, I did not work out with her in the gym. And that, I think, was a healthy thing to do. I wanted Madeline to feel her own sense of ownership in the space that is the gym and achieve her accomplishments wholly on her own. Good morning. It's before 7 a.m. I'm tired as hell. And getting up this early to go work out is so hard. Oh, baby. He's laying on my legs and I don't want to get up. I guess I have to get up now. I'm on mile four and I just have to finish until five. Everything hurts and I want to die. At first I just started running like three miles every now and then just to kind of get back into running. Once I started to get to the point where I was like, okay, I have to do longer runs. The first couple of long runs were really, really hard. I can't walk downstairs. Oh my God, this hurts. My entire body would be sore for the entire week and not just like a little sore, like, oh yeah, I got a good workout and I'm sore, but like I could not walk properly sore. <sighs> Running does not get easier, despite what everyone says. I got to like a mile and a half and just like had an emotional breakdown and turned around. I'm just like always sore and always really tired. And when I'm on my runs, I just get super in my head and I just don't think that I can do it. And I just like constantly compare myself. I'm like, I run so slow compared to everybody else. And even though I might finish the race, I just feel like it's nothing because it's not finishing it well. I don't know why I'm doing all this work and I don't feel like I'm enough for myself. I was honestly having a really rough couple of weeks. I was honestly not feeling very good about any of it. I was super insecure. I kept questioning why I was running a half marathon. I really enjoyed the strength training and that motivated me and made me excited. But then I would also get sort of in my head about it because I wanted to do well, like I wanted to show improvement and I was just afraid that it wouldn't look like I was trying hard enough or my body hadn't changed enough. Oh, I just finished my run. I was good about running in such a way that it didn't hurt my hip, but it doesn't matter how I'm running, my hip just seizes up near the end of the run, sometimes in the middle of the run. It's exactly my hip flexor and it's just like a rock. I'm gonna get new shoes this weekend, so hopefully that helps. I'm with my friend Eric and we're at a runner's circle in Silver Lake and we're going to pick out some shoes for me to run in so I don't my hip up. <laughs> my feet would just start randomly hurting because like the laces were too tight. That kind of stopped happening, partly because I loosened them. I think that my toes kind of hitting the front. These are pretty. They feel more cushiony. For some reason, I think I like the other ones better though. I've been going on runs with my brand new shoes and I am really surprised because I can run longer without having to stretch now. And it's saying something about like the way that the shoe is absorbing and correcting my posture when I'm running. It's nice that I can keep running and focus on the workout instead of having to focus on whether or not I'm going to hurt myself. Woo! Go Madeline, let's go! So today is one of Madeline's long runs, so I decided to come out and cheer her on. We're actually running on the course that Madeline will be doing the half marathon on. What do you think of it so far? 
It's really beautiful out here. It's important if you can to train where you're going to race. So you're just like mentally prepared. There she is. Water. I noticed like a little change in my body, like appearance wise, but other people have been commenting and they're like, your stomach looks so flat. Like what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know, I guess the diet's working. The biggest thing that's changed for me since working out though, is like my confidence about my body. Two and a half miles left to go. Coming together to do this long distance run was really fun. At the end of it, I just felt a sense of personal accomplishment because I was like, oh man, I haven't run nine miles in a while. And then also excitement for Madeline that she did it too. Damn, my ass hurts. And you did this after working out with Nick all week. Honestly, I'm just perpetually sore at this point. <laughs> my body just hurts all the time. For a long time, my response to being too overbearing to Madeline was to not do anything at all. And I felt like finally I was able to share this space of health and fitness with her without overcrowding her and being there to support her. Working out with Michelle was great. She's always so supportive and encourages me to push myself to my limits. However, sometimes I just get in my head a little bit and start comparing myself. I just sort of felt guilty. I just knew she wasn't gonna get as good of a workout as she would have if she were just by herself. We're having a little mental health chat here. I noticed you were getting really hard on yourself towards the end of that workout. Yeah. I'm so hard on myself. I think I like yoga because there's no actual goal. The whole point is it's for yourself and you're not supposed to compare yourself to anybody in the class. Yeah. But then like when I do group things, sometimes I start comparing myself and I get in my head and then I'm like, nobody's putting this pressure on me except for myself. And then I get more in my head because I'm just doing it to myself. Well, you did great today. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, you have come so far, and you're going to do so good at the half marathon. Don't even worry about it. Just think of it like another training run. Yeah. And me and Garrett will be there cheering for you. The hardest part for me is actually just saying no to people. Saying no when I knew I had to get up in the morning and run, even though I wanted to stay out longer. Saying no when everybody wanted me to drink more than I was allowed to. It was just really hard to be so disciplined. And it kind of drove me a little bit crazy. It's my last week of training. I'm on my period and it's 10 p.m. and I have to run for 30 minutes. Why did I sign up for this? <laughs> Basically everything that could go wrong was going wrong. My car broke down, I was working really late every day at work, and on top of that, I was on my period. I just did not want to run a half marathon after all of that. Honestly, some of that old me kind of kicked in. Damn, I should have been at every single training session with her. I should have been checking in on her more. And I had to let go. I had to just realize sometimes I just need to listen. Sometimes I just need to let her vent and say it's gonna be okay. I can't believe I just did that. I cannot believe I just took various classes back to back and survived in the best shape that I've ever been in. I took a various class and still couldn't really finish it. So to be able to have done enough work over the past five weeks in order to be able to take two back to back and like not completely die, I'm so freaking proud of myself. Like, I can't believe I just did that. I needed that. I really needed to be able to do something this week. And that, that was a confidence boost that I think I really, really needed. I'm about to head over to Michelle's to take the after photos that I am super nervous about. I'm nervous that it's not gonna be a big enough difference for people to care. But I know that I got a lot stronger and that's what matters. And I should just focus on that. But like, I don't know, I'm still nervous about it, okay? <laughs> We're here. We're at the end. Congrats, Madeline. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for you to get your results. You've lost 1.6 pounds. Okay kind of small, right? Let's dig a little bit deeper. You actually dropped your body fat percentage 5.47%. What? Which, which is 7.27 pounds of body fat. <laughs> What's even more exciting is your lean mass change. When you were starting training for the marathon, were you gonna lose muscle because you were burning a lot of calories? So we had to kind of adjust for that when you started that training. You actually gained 5.67 pounds of lean mass. For how many calories you're burning, that is incredible. Wow. Yeah, I'm really excited and pleased to see that. That is extremely challenging to drop body fat and gain muscle. 
just a testament to your hard work. Mm -hmm. And that's true for your nutrition too. Like think about all the dietary restrictions that you had. That alone is a huge challenge. I think the thing that shocked me the most about the results was when I first saw my before photo because I felt like when I look in the mirror, I saw something different. Throughout this challenge, I didn't realize that I was changing. I wanna keep this body. I wanna take care of it. I wanna make sure that going forward, I don't let it go. Good morning. It's race day. And it's raining really freaking hard. The invite said it's a rain or shine event, so I don't want to. This looks absolutely miserable. I was dreading it. I was thinking, how am I going to do this since I had never really run too much more than 10 miles. So this was the longest run that I was ever going to do. She was not feeling good about the experience she was about to have. And for a split second, I was even like, should I jump in and run this with her? Would that be helpful to her? And I had to let go and say, no, she needs to do this on her own so that when she finishes it, she did it 100% on her own. Listen for the horn in the half marathon. Half marathon is gonna be starting in a few seconds. Listen for the horn. When I was running it, I was thinking about how I'm gonna get this over with. I knew I was supposed to be doing it for myself, but I sort of had felt like I had proven myself enough when I ran 10 miles, when I was able to do pull-ups and push-ups. That, to me, was proving myself. So then I was sort of like, why am I going this extra 13 miles? Woo! We're just passing mile six. And around this time, I start to feel like, I can do anything. Ah! The second half of the race, I just started thinking about all the people who were supporting me and encouraging me. This is kind of cheesy, but like, when people ask you to describe yourself in one word, I'm always like, what would that be? But in this race, I started to think that a word you could use to describe me was durable. I just started to feel like I could make it through anything. Am I enough? Am I enough for other people? Can I be enough for myself? I struggle a lot with feeling like I can be enough. But as the race went on, everybody started texting me and Michelle and Garrett were at all the pit stops cheering me on. I didn't ask anybody to do that, you know? It made me feel like I was enough. I just started crying, and I think there were just like tears of joy. I was just so happy that I had done it. Crossing the finish line made me understand why people run. I was so shocked to find out that I came out in fifth in my division. It's gotta be because nobody showed up because it was raining, but I don't even care. I'm taking it. <laughs> Madeline has been an amazing sister to me. She has been there to support me through so much of my life. She helped me start my very first YouTube channel. She helped me film, she helped me edit. She continually shows up for me at all of these crazy things that I do. And to have the opportunity to be her fan and support her, I was finally able to give back to her in a way she's done for me our whole life. Madeline, I'm really happy we had this experience together, but you did all of the work. Like, I don't want you to feel, because it's not the truth, that I gave this to you. You earned it. It's sometimes hard to do things for yourself entirely. You know, like, yes, I was doing it for myself, but it helped to have somebody hold me accountable and say, if I don't do this, then like, we don't have an end to the video. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below with who you want to see next on Extreme Body Makeover. And as always, subscribe. Also, be sure to follow Madeline on all her social media platforms because she's awesome and cool. As always, have a great day. Bye. Look at you be bad. <laughs> You're so bad. I'm so sweaty. I sort of burnt my eggs today. Whenever this happens with meal prep, it just makes me really want to eat out, but I can't. <laughs>